Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. There we go. I asked Caden if he forgot to take a bath. Everybody's on one side of the church. And then I asked Brother Bowen, I said, well, we must have the sheep and the goats. He said, I'm a sheep, so. So I got to stand over here. It looks like I wasn't planning on preaching tonight, but I may have to preach to all these goats over here. <laughs> I heard moaning. <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We, uh, of course, tonight's our song and testimony night. That pen don't work. Um, but I'm going to first, I'm going to go through some prayer requests and some announcements. Uh, Announcement-wise, don't forget about our food pantry. And uh, we got a basket back there. Anybody wants to bring stuff for it, they can drop it in the basket. Also, don't forget about our five-year plan and then choir practice every Sunday night at 5.15. Uh, men's group is going to be November the 9th. That is not uh, this Monday as in tomorrow, but the following Monday. And we're going to be, at the, I guess, at the McDonald's again. So uh, remember that. Thanksgiving Christmas dinner is December the 13th, immediately after our morning worship service. And we will not be having an evening service that night. December the 16th, the children and youth are having a Christmas party from 7 to 8.30, and the adults are allowed to join them at 8.30 at the end of the party. That's usually how it works, but that's all right. We may just have a Christmas party up here. <laughs> uh, Sunday, December 20th, we're going to be having our Christmas Jubilee on our evening service, so uh, make plans for that. Uh, Wednesday, December the 23rd, we're having a special communion service down at the Fellowship Hall. And then on the, ne the next Wednesday, December 30th, we are not having service, but we are on December 31st. That's, we're going to have a watch night service uh, down at the Fellowship Hall. And right now, we're going to plan to start about 9 o'clock, but we may change that depending on what kind of activities we line up. So, But uh, no church. The, what you need to remember is no church on Wednesday, but we are having church on Thursday. And then board meetings January the 18th. And then the last thing here, the youth are assembling fruit baskets for Christmas, and we need names and addresses of folks that, uh, uh, that we want to give fruit baskets to. And so um, you can give those to either Dennis or Neil, either one, and, they will, um, and they will, they'll get it squared away. Um, prayer requests, I have uh, Roger Sutherland uh, as having open heart surgery. And then... Uh, Josh Payton, that's Bobby and Diane's grandson. They asked us to be in prayer for him. And then um, Jeremy Beard, that is uh, Brother Larry Nichols' son-in-law. And he asked us to be in prayer for him. He ha they have found a brain tumor about the size of a golf ball. And he's got to have uh, some kind of MRI-type test done tomorrow to see if they're going to be able to do the gamma knife surgery on him or if they're going to have to open his head up and take it out that way. So... Um, but he's, uh, they've got three, three small children. All, I think the oldest one may be uh, six or seven years old. And, uh, and so, uh, but they're concerned about that. Again, his name is Jeremy Beard. And then Joseph Welch, that is um, Jim Clark's brother-in-law. And uh, I talked to him yesterday, and he said that he went, he come through a surgery really good and everything, but um, they're just, you know, just trying to get him to build his strength up and everything. But they think that um, um, they took care of everything with his pancreas, so. What other spoken requests do we have tonight? All right, what else tonight? Yeah, I got it. What else tonight? Yes, continue to pray for Jason. Yes, Kate. What else? Uh, yes. What else? Tonight. Any unspoken requests tonight? All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, we come tonight and just thank you for uh, allowing each of us to be able to come to your house and to worship together and to gather in this house and to just open our hearts to you, Father. We're going to ask you to be with our service tonight, Father, and just help us to uh, open ourselves up to what you have to say to us, whether it be in a song or a testimony tonight. You've heard the prayers tonight, Father. You've heard the requests tonight of all these that are sick, Father. We've got so many that are battling different kinds of diseases and cancers and all the many different things that they've got going on in their bodies, and they're just asking for answers tonight, Father. We just pray that you give them the answers that they seek, Father, that you give them the touch that they need tonight, whether it be a physical touch, a spiritual touch, Father, that you help them, that you give them comfort, you give them joy, Father. You give them contentment knowing that you're in control and you have all things in your hands tonight. We're going to trust you with these tonight, Father, and we're just going to lay them over to you and just give them over to you. We just thank you for that, and we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Are y'all ready to do some singing tonight? Smile a little bit. Be happy. All right. That's, that's better. Come on, Caden. You going to open us up tonight?
turn to page 136, so come with us adore him. I know we usually sing the songs all around it, but both of the last two songs. looked at that in your hymnal, I was looking at the bottom of that when it was, because uh, I, I had to pay attention to everything. Uh, that was written in 1751, that song. Mm -hmm. And then uh, stanzas, the, the first stanza was, and then the music to it, then stanzas two through four were added in 1841. And this song is not, we sing, when do we sing this song? Christmas, right? We know it as a Christmas song, but it's, it's, this really isn't a Christmas song. This is a, it, this is a praise and worship song from 1751. And, it, you know, oh, come let us adore him, oh, come let us adore him, oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And then we'll praise his name forever. We'll give him all the glory for he alone is worthy, Christ the Lord. They don't get any better than that, do they? Amen. Amen. All right, that's what we're going to do. Jerry, come on up here. Jerry asked me to read his testimony. Y'all just stay put because we're going to do some more singing. And, but uh, we've got Jerry some songs queued up, and he asked me to read his testimony tonight. And I told him I would be honored to. And he wanted me to point out and let everybody know that this isn't Jerry's words. This is the words that the Lord gave him and asked him to put on paper. And so, But I'm going to read what he's got written here. It says, God called me to minister 15 years ago. My mom and daddy grew, uh, grew me up in the Pentecostal way. They taught me how to talk right, walk right, and live right. And they talked about the old Pentecostal way. No man will see God except uh, they live holy. You have to live holy. I know a lot of people who are not living holy. And it says, Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I have a lot of people in my prayer book that are lost. And if you have any family members or know anyone who is lost, you can write them in my prayer book and God will move. And, and I'll just add something that, that Jerry didn't put in here, but I'll add that I, I know uh, that he, he takes those very seriously and he prays over the names in that book. And so if you've got anybody that you want to add to that, he, uh, they usually leave it up here and you can just bring them and add them to it. Um, it says here, God told me to warn you and I don't want any blood on my hands. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's Joshua twenty four fifteen. He says, I go to different churches. There is a Somerset pastor that's upset with me for preaching the truth. I was heading home the other night, and God spoke to me and said, If God be for me, then who can be against me? And the truth will set you free. He says, I'm not going to tickle your ears because, because God loves you, and so do I, and that is why I tell you the truth. The Judy Kay and I go to different churches and sing and play the drums, and God has anointed us to do so, and people say we sound all right. People don't live holy no more. It says, the blind will lead the blind, and they will all fall in the ditch. The country is for homosexuality, and that is an abomination in God's eyes. I can't back up on the word of God. 
It says there is a church where the pastor allows bowling in the basement during church, and the church is supposed to be God's house, and that's not the place to, or the time to bowl. If I don't tell the truth, God will ch uh, chasten me. It says in the Old Testament, it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. These were two cities where sin ran rapid and homosexuality consumed the two cities. And because of this, they were destroyed with fire and brimstone. And God spared Abraham and his wife and Lot and his family. Lot's family didn't want to live holy or leave the city. Uh, so his son-in-law stayed and his wife turned to a pillar of salt when she looked back at the city while God was destroying them with fire and brimstone. And the world is getting worse than those two cities. He says, now homosexuals are taking part in service, and I don't mean by giving their life to Christ and repenting of their sins. And God is against homosexuality, them preaching, singing, or taking part in the church. He says, the only thing he is not against is them repenting of their sins and changing their ways. And as I have had people to tell me that others will come against me and kill me, and I'm going to stand on the word of God. He says, I'm not going to back down or run when the battle gets hot. And God said people would hate him, for they would hate me too. Uh, what is wrong with living right? What's wrong with living holy? God sent His Son Jesus to die for our sins so that we could live holy. You don't, uh, you don't have to, and God gave you a choice. You can straddle the fence. You have to live for Jesus or for Satan, but you can't live for both. I had to write this down and give it, give it out for, the, for God told me to. The Word of God will stand when the world is on fire. Jesus is coming soon. The world is getting worse and worse every day. Jesus could come in four or five years, but he also could come while my testimony is being read. Uh, though friends forsake me, I'm still going on with Jesus just the same. Let the world go by, but give me Jesus. I can't do anything without, without my Lord. I can't sing, walk, talk, breathe, etc. without my Lord. I'm going to preach the Word of God like God called me to, even though people may hate or ridicule my name. I'm still going to preach the Word of God, and there's no backing out. God is going to pour out His wrath on the earth. God says, you've got to be ready. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. That's Acts 2.17. It says, preach the word, and be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all longsuffering and doctrine, from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 2. It says, many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, we have, not, have we not prophesied in thy name? And have we not cast out devils? And in, the name, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these, saying, these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. That's Matthew 7, 22 through 24. And thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and seek, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. That's Jeremiah 6, 16. And God called me to minister, and some people don't like me. I have to do what the Bible says. God says to praise Him, or the rocks will cry out. And I don't want them crying out in my place. Praise Him in the good time and in the bad time. Praise Him with musical instruments. God loves me down in the valleys as well on the mountaintop. God knows all about you. He knows the very number of hairs on your head. He knows the sin you already committed and the sin you will commit. For your sin will find you out. He knows what your plans are for today and tomorrow. He knew you before you were born. Jesus is coming soon like a thief in the night. I know someone who's coming to my house and I would have, I would have my gun and be ready. The Bible says to be ready all the time. Jesus wants sinners, homosexuals, adulterers, fornicators, liars, drunkards, druggies, murderers, etc. to come to repentance for he loves them all, not their ways. That's why he shed his blood on Calvary and took the beating and stripes for our healing for we were all sinners. No sin is greater than the other. In God's sight, it is all the same. No big or little sins. And I have to please God, not man, which is why I go to different churches to preach and sing and play the drums and to win the lost souls for God. I don't want any blood on my hands. I'm going to sing me a happy song, raise my hands in the air, and praise the Lord. I'm going to put the devil under my feet. If I were a sinner, let me tell you, tell you what I would do. I would quit my ways of sinning and work on the building too. Uh, so that I can see God too. I love you and have to tell you the truth. I can't pat you on the back and make you feel okay if you're sinning and then your blood would be on my hands. I have to tell you the truth. 
Claim your victory and put the devil under your feet. If God says to run, shout, or pray for the sick, you'd better do it. When God says to move, you'd better move. My God is still alive and I can, I can feel him all over me. The Bible says to touch not my anointed and to do my prophets no harm. I am a soul winner for God and a lot of people is coming in and the devil doesn't like it. And it says, The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, thou hast, hast, thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast five husbands. And he whom thou, thou hast is not thy husband, in that thou sayest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall never neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know no, not what, you know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah, the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, and when he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus saith unto her, I, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? And the woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said to the men, Come and see a man which told me all things I'd ever did, and if this is not the Christ. And that was John chapter 4, verses 15 through 29. It says, God knows all about you before you were born, and he even knows how many hairs you have on your head. Work while it is day, for night cometh when no man can work. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. God, God's not pleased with you laying out in a bathing suit in front of people. You've got to live holy and dress holy or you can't make it to heaven. You're not supposed to lust after anyone. The Bible says that if you lust, you have already committed adultery in your heart. You can't, you can't be mad at me and you have to be mad at God. You, you have to live holy or you can't see God. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God knows every thought you think and every word out of your mouth. I'm telling you the truth. I love you all. I don't want any blood on my hands. God told me to write this down. And, not, and it's not me. If God tells me to pray for the sick, I will. God still heals. He heals cancer and all diseases. When the battle gets hot, I'm not going to run. I will stand on the word of God. People don't like the old-time holy Pentecostal anymore. I'm Pentecostal from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and I have to live holy daily to see God, and so do you. A woman at Broadhead Church of God prophesied to me and told me to go to different churches and read my testimony to sing and to play drums. God moved, and he showed me the streets of gold in heaven and the lake of fire in hell. God is not dead, but he is still alive. When I fasted 40 days and 40 nights, I saw angels. God moved in my life. If you want God to move for you, then you need to pray and fast. I know a man that God healed of cancer, Harley Hensley. In Georgia, there was a mommy and a daddy that was going to leave and go to Walmart. They didn't see their little boy and backed over him. The mommy and daddy prayed, and he had others pray over him, and God healed him instantly. If you are sick, the pastor and I will pray for you. A little bird in a box that was sick, and I fed him and gave him water. I prayed for it, and God healed the bird. A sister from Eubank told me that young people died lost in a car wreck. She told me I needed to go to different churches because people need um, what I have to tell them. People can't fire me or hire me. I work for God. I'm about the father's business. A four or five year old girl told me that my name told me my name and didn't know me. Uh, God says he knows my name. You can't hide from God. God sees all. Pray for me that I can win souls. Now, a love offering won't bother me. I walk the old paths. The old man is dead, and God gave me a brand new heart and a brand new mind. Old things have passed away, and all things are new. I am burdened for the lost, and I am trying to win souls. Amen. Amen. Good job. Amen. You going to sing for us? Hey, you're queued up back here. Here's your mic. You going to sing with me, Jimmy? I'll, get, I'll hook you up to <laughs> Tells of his 
for me. Put stumbling blocks in my way. I stand up, hold my feet. And these are the words I say. I tell them I'm going on my Jesus just the same. Yes, I am. I'm going on my Jesus just the same. Now you may false accuse me. Now we got another special treat tonight. Making his uh, debut. <laughs> Brother Neil's going to come. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just, just hold it up. Uh, like I said, it, it's going to be out of my comfort zone a little bit. But uh, the word that Brother Buford gave this morning, which was uh, Philippians 4 13, it says, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, I guess that's what's going to help. <clears throat> Have anybody in here uh, seen that movie, uh, Glory? <clears throat> it's about like a, a colored regiment. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, they, uh, at the end of the movie, they have, they're uh, like in a semicircle. They're, uh, they're singing. They're giving a devotional. I'm doing the chorus part of it. There is no sheet music for this. I mean, the chorus part of it goes... Oh, my Lord, my Lord, Lord, Lord. That's the uh, chorus part of it. And then everything else that's going to be in there, I wrote in there myself. So it, I guess you can say this is my own little devotional. Really? Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. He knows my name, my Lord, Lord, Lord. He knows my name, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh -huh. He knows my salvation, my Lord, Lord, Lord. 
He knows my salvation, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. He forgives my sins, my Lord, Lord, Lord. He forgives my sins, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. He fills me with grace, my Lord, Lord, Lord. He fills me with grace, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. He gave His Son, my Lord, Lord, Lord. He gave His only Son, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. Now this little part's going to be for all of us. One day He'll take me home, my Lord, Lord, Lord. He'll take me home, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he's my Lord, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, who's next? Who's going to follow that? Gaden, you gonna come come back? Gaden got another one here. You're back on. Page of 442, Blessed Assurance.
Now turn to page uh, 475. This is where you all should get happy. Turn to page 770. It's not too early to think about Thanksgiving. Actually, Thanksgiving, giving thanks is something probably we need to be, think a whole lot of, giving thanks to the Lord for all that he, he blesses us with. And before we uh, sing this song, I, I want to do a real quick invitation. I forgot to ask Buford to announce this, but uh, two weeks from yesterday, which would be uh, a week from this coming Saturday, uh, at Keenby uh, Church in Nazarene, we have uh, the group, the Happy Travelers, that are going to be singing and sharing with us some music. So I'll have some flyers to, if it's okay to give out next week. And, and if you want directions, I can have, probably have that too. But uh, if you're interested, uh, you can, you're welcome, you're invited. And I will realize it's a little bit of a drive, so if you don't want to make the drive, I understand that too. But I want you to know that the invitation extends to all of you. That's November 14th at 6.30 at the King Bee Church of the Nazarene. So. <laughs> with 
with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. We'll flip over a few pages to 736. Uh, we can give thanks because uh, Jesus loves us. He loves me. He loves even me. On page 736. I am so glad that our Father in heaven Tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Amen. And then this this doesn't really have a whole lot to do the other two songs and some, but uh, if you want to turn to page 240, it um, seems like the Lord has laid this song on my heart tonight to sing. And if uh sing about... In the cross, in the cross, be my glory forever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. And uh, in, in a way, in, in some ways, this is my testimony, my prayer, and, and then also uh, uh, a praise for all that God has done for us on the cross and as, and as our risen Savior. And he sends the Holy Spirit to, to give us power uh, to, to overcome all, that, uh, that all the trials and temptations that, that the world will throw at us. So page 240, near the cross.
its shadows o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the Jack, you have a song or two or four or five? Let them sing. <laughs> All right, Roy, you got any songs you want to sing? I know Michelle's got one back there. She'd print it off too. So. Mm. Let Michelle go ahead and sing. All right, get your vo vocal cords warmed up, though. <laughs> Yes, 
tell you what, I, I have just been blessed so much this evening. I mean, the singing, I really love that testimony, brother. That was, that was very good. And, uh, and all the good singing. And Brother Neil, yeah. you should have been in the choir a long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> so uh, a lot of good singing tonight. I don't even know where to begin. Um, With a G. Yeah. yeah. You know, when the sun comes up. All right. All right. <laughs> when the sun comes up tomorrow, Lord, I'll be praising you. I'll always give you glory. In everything I do Although the storm clouds gather Or should the skies be blue When the sun comes up tomorrow Lord, I'll be praising you You took my sins to Calvary and die that I might live. I know that I'm not worthy of the blessings that you give. I know that you still love me, and Lord, I love you too. When the sun comes up tomorrow, Lord, I'll be praising you. When the sun comes up tomorrow, Lord, I'll be praising you. I'll always give you glory in everything I do. Although the storm clouds gather, or should the skies be blue, when the sun comes up tomorrow, Lord, I'll be praising you. I may be on the mountain or in the valley low. I may be free from heartache or burdened as I go. Until my journey's ended, 
and my life on earth is through when the sun comes up tomorrow lord i'll be praising you when the sun comes up tomorrow lord i'll be praising you i'll always give you glory in everything i do although the storm clouds gather or should the skies be blue when the sun comes up tomorrow lord i'll be praising you when the sun comes up tomorrow lord i'll be praising you amen While the world looks upon me as I struggle along, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing. How I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me of a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. worthy and these clothes they're not new I don't have much money but Lord I have you and that's all that matters though the world may not see thank you for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me of a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord. And a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me.
Like the woman brought to Jesus who was taken in her sin. I was so ashamed of what I'd done and where I had been. Well, justice called for payments. That was more than I could give. But mercy smiled upon me saying, I forgive. Oh, sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Death sentence then was wiped away and I could live. Well, I like the part where he told about a mansion he would give. But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Well, if you're tired of living with the wrong that you have done, come on home to Jesus, you know he's the cleansing one. In his arms he'll hold you, you've just begun to live. When you hear him gently whisper, I forgive. Old sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Death sentence then was wiped away and I could live. Well, I like the part where he told about a mansion he would give. But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Oh, the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. This sentence then was wiped away and I could live. Well, I like the part where he told about a mansion he would give. But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. But the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. about a wedding but they only showed two men so I fired off an email and the invite just for then well come on down to the farm come on out to the barn you won't see two roosters walking arm in arm they can't make a chicken they don't have an egg to hatch but when the Lord said love your brother I don't think he meant like that I commenced to tell him that mm -hmm, two bulls can't make a mm -hmm, two mares can't make a cow. They take some male and female for the species to go on. There'll be no reproduction if the plumbing is all wrong. So come on down to the farm, come on out to the barn. You won't see two roosters walking arm in arm. They can't make a chicken, they don't have an egg to hatch. When the Lord said, love your brother, I don't think he meant like that. I don't think 